Hi guys, welcome to a new series. I had the itch again to play some Skyblock. Last time we played was in 1.14. In the meantime, a lot of new features got added to the game that we can also experience in Skyblock. The playthrough is gonna pick up all the ideas we had for the 1.14 Skyblock world. So we're gonna have access to all the biomes, all the structures, all the dimensions, all the mobs, all the items, and even all the enchantments. I found a wonderful mod by Jack Sorrell that does everything for us. So it has a world generation feature that removes all the blocks, except of course the starter island and the end portal frames of the strongholds. But of course keeps everything else intact. So our ocean monument is just going to be removed, but the bounding box still allows us to spawn guardians there, for example. Jack Sorrel also added custom features that go beyond the vanilla mechanics, but are in the spirit of the vanilla mechanics to make all the blocks and items available. For example, if you use a thick potion on a stone block, you can turn it into deep slate. Or in a blast furnace, you can smelt diorite into calcite. I'm sure it will be a lot of fun you know, playing around with the vanilla and non-vanilla mechanics, trying to automate everything and get every item available in Skyblock. So let's talk about what we're working with. By default, the mod generates a little starter island for you at around Y64. I think there's still phantom spawning. You would actually need to go one block lower to avoid it. Uh, there is some grass blocks and two nylium blocks. So the nylium blocks are kind of useful, so we can grow nether trees later. And for example, the nether ward blocks can be turned into nether wards directly if a goat rams them. So that's a quite fun way to have access to nether wards, which we need for brewing. Apart from that, there's not much available, so no lava or water to make a cobblestone generator. We can later buy lava from the warning trader and also buy dripstone, so we can get more lava this way. And we can also get water by fighting zombies, hoping that we get a rare iron ingot drop, at some point craft a cauldron, and then yeah, wait for rain for the cauldron to fill. You need more iron to also get a bucket and uh, get it from the cauldron. So this would be the way towards the cobblestone generator. So quite a rough start, but it's not hard enough for me because we also have access to an oak tree, which means we have immediate access to apples, which we need to convert a zombie villager to a villager later. So it's a bit too easy for me. I'm gonna start with an acacia tree instead. No access to apples, and also once we have bone meal, no immediate access to bees. I'm gonna start with the acacia tree, and then later we have to buy an oak sapling from the warning trader as well. But it's gonna be quite challenging to get emeralds to actually buy the oak sapling from the warning trader. So, the way to get emeralds without villagers, since we can't just start a raid without a villager as well, would be actually to wait for foxes to spawn with an emerald in their mouth. Then we could yeah, get enough emeralds this way to buy the oak sapling eventually. FYI, in case you want to play the same mod pack, it's as easy as dragging mods into your mod folder. Uh, you can just follow the instructions on CurseForge. I will also link that in the video description. Okay, then you just need to create a new world. Then you need to select a Carpet Sky Edition Stellar Pack. This adds, for example, a custom bonus recipe and so on. Um, we're actually gonna yeah, create our world here. Skyblock World 119. Difficulty, I'm gonna play hard, I think. Then in more world options, you need to select um, the world type sky block. So make sure all the yeah, blocks are deleted. Um, generate structures, structures on, of course. Then a seed for world generator. Let's do a random one in case you wanna play the same world. The same seed, let's do a mango sky block 2022. All right, that's it, we can yeah, create a new world. Right, so definitely it's a bit luck dependent which kind of biome we get, because we don't have access to apples, that means we also don't have access to food immediately. If you spawn in a plains biome, something like that, where animals spawn will make things a lot easier. Let's see, I think our ocean biome would be pretty bad. And it's a dry biome. It's the savanna, we definitely have access to F3. Eroded badlands, oh, this is gonna be rough. <laughs> Uh, as far as I know, no animals spawn in a badlands biome. Alright, I guess we have to rely on rotten flesh for food in the beginning. Right, then I'm just gonna prepare the tree here and change it to an acacia tree and then we can start. Alright, so we don't have a lot of options. I think the only thing we can do really in the beginning is punching wood. Um, and hope that we actually get a sapling. There's always a chance with those skyblock worlds that you actually don't get a saplings and then 
we basically need to start over again. So I actually made a save of the world already in case this would happen. Um, I can maybe also share that save in case you, you don't want to add the acacia tree yourself. Right. So 5% chance per leaf block to get a, get a sapling. Can probably help a little bit by punching some. Usually I have terrible luck. <laughs> but I should at least get a sapling. There we go. Right, we have one sapling. This should be good. Let's hope that we can get another one. I mean, it can still fail. <laughs> Second one would be nice though. I also thought about providing fewer grass blocks and so on in the beginning. So maybe only start with a 3x3 three three space, but it would have been really inconvenient because then there's always a chance the saplings would actually fall down. And it would also slow down things unnecessarily because then we only have a limited amount of trees we can grow. So it would really slow down things if you had fewer grass blocks. Don't think there was really any point doing this. Okay, so yeah, we were terribly unlucky by only getting a single sapling, but I guess it was still below average. Usually you hope for at least a second sapling. All right, then it's waiting time. I also briefly considered playing hardcore, but I know that I'm clumsy. Eventually it would fall in a void and it's all over. This wouldn't be very fun. But I kind of also don't want to encourage dying needlessly. For example, we could solve all of our hunger issues in the beginning by just jumping in the void and we start with a fresh hunger bar. I think uh, that would, I don't know, defeat the purpose. So I definitely try to keep the amount of deaths as low as possible. And yeah, the beginning is live off. Rotten flesh. Let's try to survive as long as possible. I guess while we wait for this to grow, we can already maybe craft some stuff. I guess a crafting table is something we definitely need. Maybe, I guess once we have more wood available, it would make sense to have an axe. But it's actually mostly waiting time right now. So what do we do with this? I can craft something like slabs. Then we could already bridge out a little bit. And explore. I mean... Right now it wouldn't even help if I go away 24 blocks to enable mob spawning, I feel like. Um, nah, I definitely need more blocks. Okay, so I guess once the second tree has grown, we could actually do that. When night time comes, we, we could go 24 blocks away. And yeah, wait for the zombies to spawn there. I guess I don't even want to fight them. I can just wait until it would burn the next day. I guess that would be an approach. Yeah, so not much to do. I can maybe provide you with some progress update. So far, the acacia sapling has not progressed to stage one. And so the way the tree growth works, the sapling would advance to stage one, and once it advances to stage two, it would grow into a tree. Well, waiting. So it's about to turn night time already. Sapling is still at stage zero. Luckily, you don't need to be afraid of phantoms already. As far as I know, they spawn after day three. So you have a bit of time to get to safety. So the way to prevent you know, the phantom spawning would be just have blocks above myself. Or we can also go lower. So now with Y64, as far as I know, like Y62 or so, is, and you're already safe from phantoms. Yep. I think they also changed it after 1.5 at some point. I think also as long as we have Skylight access, a sapling can grow at night, so it's still a point, I guess, watching this. I thought it would never happen, but finally a second tree grew. Um, now it's the same game again. Hopefully we get a sapling. By the way, I actually um, said something wrong in the beginning. The way to get lava isn't buying it from the wandering trader. It's actually a gift you can get from certain villagers if you have the hero of the village effect. So you need to start a raid, defeat it. And then you can get a lava bucket from, for example, an armor smith. So it's actually not as simple as buying it from the wooden trader. We at least need to get villagers until we have access to lava. Okay, now we got a couple blocks more. Also, the way the food isn't isn't gonna be that hard. I just realized. So if we now have enough blocks to, yeah, we can make slabs out of this. Um, there's a sapling. It's always good. Um, to Go far enough away from this island, um, hopefully a skeleton would spawn. 
and in the morning burn to death. Hopefully drop a bone so we can get bone meal and then we can bone meal the grass here, get some seeds hopefully, we can craft a hoe and grow some wheat. So we might not need to live off rotten flesh after all. So see, I haven't really thought this through. I'll just yeah, experience and explore it yeah, along the way. Okay, I got some really good news. This time we got three saplings back and I started to expand our island a little bit here on the side. Because one sapling actually flew into the void. So I'm just gonna add a ring around. Or should we maybe save a couple more slabs? Um, yeah, definitely at night I wanna yeah, bridge out a little bit so we can get mobs to spawn. This will be quite interesting. We need to go away like 24 blocks. Right. Then make a little safe AFK spot for me as well. We should even be able to go away 32 blocks. The mobs can also despawn because like the worst would be the, the creeper spawns there. And I have to fight them this only could get me into trouble. Can maybe also check which biome we're in. Still eroded badlands. I should have placed bottom slabs though. Oh no, now they can spawn on this walkway as well. Yeah, there's something we can fix. <laughs> Let's just finish this now. And then I kind of want to surround myself with some blocks. Get into safety. Door would be great. Let's hope another tree grows. Almost night time. And no other tree has grown, and also just realized the worst thing that could actually happen would be an enderman spawning, picking up our nylium block, and, and at least they wouldn't despawn anymore. But we would need to kill him. Yeah. My fighting skills would we'll probably just punch him into the void to die over and over again. Um, I'm thinking we should maybe also just AFK the knight here without any mob spawning. Technically, they could now spawn at the other end there. So if I stand in the middle, everything should be safe. Um, let's hope that ne the next day the trees will grow. We also really need to get into safety for next night from the phantoms. Not sure if they spawn at night 3 or 4, but yeah, we need to get to safety. Things are going really slow. Last 15 minutes and nothing happened. Still, it's 3 saplings that I haven't grown. Well, I told you I'm exceptionally unlucky. <laughs> we had three saplings and it didn't grow all day long. It's getting night time and I'm not entirely sure, but I'm gonna yeah, enable the safety protocol already. Let's get a block we can stand under. So the phantom spawning should be disabled. Wow. Sun is rising and I think at this point I can also confirm that saplings probably don't grow at night. So once we maybe get a torch, uh, this would be very helpful. But we're actually a very long time away from that. I guess we need to get some coal first. And we're very far away from a furnace. Okay, so what's new? A creeper actually spawned at night time over there. Um, it was probably a good decision to remove two blocks there. We can't just pathfind over. I guess eventually he would despawn. Um, I don't think there's any point risking something right now to get a little bit of gunpowder. Wouldn't help much anyway. So, yeah, not much to do than waiting for the saplings to grow. Finally. All right. So I also had no time to come up with a new plan. I think it would be actually best if we make our mob spawning platform yeah, over there. Because then the chance that an enderman would actually teleport over and pick up a nylium and whatnot would be really small. A really useful block we can craft would be the trapdoor because this can help us get low in the world. So I think the trick is to stand on a trapdoor, then have another one right there. Then we use the trick where we close the trapdoor. We have to be under this one. Now I gotta be careful to not activate this one here somehow. But I can if I press shift, place a block against the underside of this trapdoor. So we got a block that is one block lower now. Yeah, and we can use this trick to get lower in the world, which is of course important for mob spawning, like that happens a bit quicker if you're low in the world. Uh, and we can also get away from the phantoms this way. I actually got so many logs now, I'm gonna craft an axe, finally. Perhaps a little bit. 
Almost night time again. Yeah, it's time to hurry up. And get to safety. So I placed almost three stacks of slabs. This should be a large enough area to hopefully get at least some bones next night. Okay, let's head back and chop down more trees. All right, so it's night time again, and we already have some mobs spawning. There are a couple of creepers, husks because of the desert biome, and spiders. So hopefully, in the end, will all the mobs can also despawn again. There will be some skeletons left over. So we will probably like wait an extra three minutes. So the skeletons burned, the items would lay on the ground, and then there's enough time for most of the creepers and spiders to despawn. Okay, it should all work according to plan, hopefully later. Ooh, exciting, almost daytime, and there's at least four skeletons. But they're despawning left and right. Uh, there was actually a chicken jockey, I just realized. The baby zombie was sitting on something. Could have gotten a chicken. Ah, that would actually be super nice to have for eggs. Also food source. Um, but of course we have to know that the chickens of the chicken jockeys don't lay eggs and also can despawn. So unless we can quickly breed two of them to get a new chicken, they can't despawn. And there's also an egg laying chicken afterwards, it wouldn't be too helpful right now without name tags. So only three skeletons left. I don't think new zombies would spawn now. Uh, mobs would spawn now. Maybe we should get a bit closer. So they don't despawn, but I'm actually scared I would get attacked. Oh no, he's coming closer. Um, definitely don't want that. <laughs> that was not good that he came closer. Oh no, the item fell down. And this one went down. Let's see. Okay, if you have to fight <laughs> our way through the, the husk. Um, just gotta push him off. There we go. And here's our reward. One bone and two arrows. So that definitely didn't work as well as I was hoping for in episode 2. We can hopefully build a better mob farm than this. But as you can see, I already lost one bunch of the hunger bar. So we need to replenish food. Didn't get any rot to flesh this time. But hopefully with the bone, we can get a load of bone meal. And hopefully some seeds. Let's see. Okay. Got a bit of grass here and there. And we got one piece of wheat seeds. Okay, then we can craft a hoe. And start growing wheat on the side here. Oh, this wouldn't work without water. I really haven't thought this through. Oh no, yeah, of course not. I guess we need to rely on rotten flesh after all. Hold on a second. Minecraft basics, it's all coming back now. Um, yeah, the seeds on top of the farmland actually prevent it from turning back into dirt. It will grow, but very slowly. And we can also use the bone meal to speed it up, of course. But I'd rather not waste it right now for this. All right, um, so we can use this after all to get some bread. Daytime again, we didn't have any mobs surviving until the end. Um, so it was also probably in hindsight a bad decision to build it in a desert biome with all the husks spawning instead of zombies because those don't burn at daytime. Should probably move it again. Yeah, but it shouldn't be too much of a problem now. We have a lot of trees growing with a couple of saplings now, so we're making a bit of progress. But I also want to yeah, work on an optimized area for growing trees. So maybe we split it up a little bit instead of having all of our dirt or grass blocks next to each other would be way better if you had a lot of yeah, like slabs in between. Only have a dirt block every fourth or fifth block for the trees to grow. Um, yeah, it's just gonna require a couple more slabs. And then we can actually start with that as well. Also, slowly making progress, getting getting lower. We're also getting there in that regard. Okay, so I made a little platform here below. This allows us to safely take out some of the dirt blocks here. Um, I'm really careful to not lose any dirt blocks because they're really precious right now. So here we would have let them a pattern and place down the saplings. So it's the next day again. Let's check if we got anything. I wasn't watching really. It was AFK. Yep, 
there's one bone and two more arrows. So we are getting there. Really getting there. <laughs> this is going to be slow. Um, I think the next thing we should actually do is now try to get a lot of building materials and build a proper mob farm. It's probably a good decision. Let's check on our wheat. Yeah, needs a little bit more. Now it's just a question should we grow more wheat? I mean, we're already just two hunger bars now. Um, I'm inclined to just bone mill this real quick. We get more seeds. Then we can plant maybe two more. Let's do that. There we go. Now we have three seeds. And then we can plant yeah, all of them. I'm just thinking, yeah, if you line them up like this, we should have the maximum growth speed. Okay, we also got one wheat, two to go, and then we can make some bread and finally eat. Oh, I just heard some villager noises. Wondering trader around? Is he up in the trees? There, there was. There's definitely a wandering trader. Um. Okay. I guess just for curiosity's sake, would there have been anything useful? Obviously, we don't have a single emerald, birch sapling. Mm, we could get bees with that. Red sand, bucket of tropical fish. Oh, this would also be a way to water. Black dye, coral block, red dye. Okay, too bad the Yamas are on the round. We could have gotten some leads and some leather. Okay. But yeah, Wandering Trader will definitely be very helpful and be very important in the near future. Okay, once you have foxes, of course. Okay, so yeah, it's just a question what we spend our building materials on. I, I think I want to do that mob farm so we can get a decent amount of bones. So we can actually just bone meal our wheat whenever we need food. Also, maybe get some rotten flesh to live on for now. And then we need to go out exploring for other biomes. So the goal would be to get to a cold biome. The snow falls so we can craft snow blocks. And yeah, the foxes can spawn on top of those. Okay, let's just keep chopping wood for a while. Actually, there's one thing we can get from the warning trader. He's not gonna like it. But usually he drinks his invisibility potion at night and then when it turns daytime again, he drinks a bucket of milk. Um, we can actually try to get that bucket of milk. As far as I know, it's a player drop. So if yeah, the wandering trader gets killed by a player, there's an 8.5% chance that he would drop that. So let's just trap him in there. Um, we have to be quick, so as soon as it turns daytime, we're gonna see the bucket of milk and then we need to immediately kill him before he has a chance to drink it. Okay, as far as I know the wandering creator can't regenerate health. So already looked it up. A wooden axe, we should do seven damage. So just gonna hit him twice. There we go. Now he should have six health left and then he would be one hit with the wooden axe. Yeah, that's something we can do next morning. This should also be the first night I can actually do something, so I should be low enough. Now, um, to avoid the phantom spawning, so I can expand the platform here with the saplings. So I have some good news and some bad news. Night's almost over, but I summoned some phantoms by being a bit careless. Um, we should probably wall ourselves in a little bit. Just be on a really safe side. And then it's just gonna burn yeah, next morning. So the sun is going up, any moment the wooden trader should drink his milk and hopefully the phantoms will burn. There you go. And yeah, knowing my luck, 8.5% chance, unfortunately we didn't get the milk bucket. Would have been of course super helpful um, because we need yeah a bucket to get the water out of the cauldron eventually. So we could have saved on getting three extra iron ingots. Okay. Can't hear the phantoms anymore. They might have burned up already. They might have even dropped some phantom membrane. Let's see. Is it safe up there? I think it is. No, it's not. <laughs> Can't see them though. Maybe they will load a platform? Could be. 
Okay, anyway, let's maybe check on the mob platform. Might have gotten another bone or an arrow or nothing as usual. Yeah, let's head back. Okay, <laughs> let's pull up the drawbridge. That guy can't get us. Oh, making this too large actually has a downside. Mobs can spawn on top of the dirt. Uh, at least we got some rotten flesh, finally. It's like the first food in eight days. <laughs> okay, let's get two hunger, I think, and some nausea. Or hunger, actually. Usually, you actually gain a little bit of food on the hunger bar. It's always 30 seconds. Let's see how it plays out. As far as I know, you should actually make a profit from this. Oh, there's also a creeper. You should not ignore the guy. Let's see? Yeah, it was worth it. <laughs> okay, so what do about the creeper? Should we fight him? I'm just super bad at this always. <laughs> Let's try. Yeah, easy. Even a little bit of XP now. One more bone. Oh, this could be good. <laughs> so overnight, four skeletons spawned here in the back of the tree farm. And they should be all within range where they don't despawn. So we got four burning skeletons at daytime. Hopefully they don't panic and run towards me and shoot me a couple times. But I still got blocks on me. I can probably wall myself in. Yeah. It's actually odd, I thought they would stop burning at the same time, but okay. Yep, trust bones, some in the back, very good. Say this was worth it. What would also be nice now would be in actually getting some string the spiders so we could craft a bed eventually but yeah that's what we're gonna build the mob farm for all right so i've been chopping trees all night and we have a bit over uh, two stacks is this already enough for the mob farm i don't think so should probably get around um, four or five stacks of logs and then we can start building the mob farm uh oh, oh what do we have here zombie with golden armor Shouldn't get too dangerous, and maybe we even get some gold from this. Be kind of helpful. Okay. We have almost five stacks of locks now. This should be enough to build a mob farm. Also, really good news. We can eat the first bread finally. Um, also, plant the other seeds. First proper food item. Alright. There we go.
Okay, so we got some good news. The mob farm is done, and the bad news is still have a couple of hostile mobs around here. Uh, the worst thing is actually this Enderman that even stole a dirt block. Alright, um, I'm really worried about this skeleton. Not looking good. One and a half hearts left. Any arrow would definitely kill me. Um, how do we take care of the skeleton now? It's gonna be quite tricky. Couple hearts more, we could do it. I mean, there's some rotten flesh. Could try to eat that stuff. But I doubt we get any saturation on it. Oh, we actually heal a little bit. Not much though. Get half a heart. Maybe we should actually try to sneak up and see if some wheat ready. No, but there's actually plenty of bone meal and bones. Actually, I lost five bones and I died building this. Totally forgot about the phantoms, that's why I died there. Would be one food item. Hopefully, that's gonna be enough. Okay, let's craft some bread. Four and a half hearts. Mm, five. Kinda confident now we can actually take on the skeleton. Also saw there's already a couple items down at the mob farm. We could maybe eat some more rotten flesh. Where's the skeleton even? Did it despawn? Okay, that, that makes it easy. Now we just need to take care of the Enderman. There we definitely have a plan. I mean, he's three blocks tall. Um, usually this should keep us safe. Two and a half, yep. Maybe even get an Ender Pearl. Yes! <laughs> All right, definitely gonna need it in the long run for Ender Eyes. Okay, then let's also check out the mob farm. There's even a witch there already. Sweet, sweet. Okay, here come the mobs. Got the sword now. There we go. First witch down. And we got a glass bottle. All right, take it. Okay, you guys also probably want to know how this works, so in order to check that, I'm just gonna use free cam real quick. Alright, so this was a pretty good start to the series, but there's still a long way to go. One of the next things we need to do is get enough iron for a cauldron, then we need to wait for rain to fill it. Yeah, in case we have a water bucket, uh, we can then place down a water source, we can then also maybe start fishing. That's a way to get a lot of different items, and yeah, one of the next things then is trying to get the villager, but this will be quite tricky. Of course, we need the foxes, as I already said, um, to get an emerald so we can buy an oak sapling, so we can finally get an apple. But we also need another component for the golden apple to heal the zombie villager, which is gold. And it's gonna be also quite hard to get. Uh, with the water we can get from the cauldron, we can also get drowns to spawn in a river biome. We could then kill the drowned mobs to get some copper, craft a lightning rod, and then we can convert pigs that we get to spawn in an appropriate biome. They wouldn't spawn here. Um, then we can convert with lightning into zombified uh, piglins, because those would actually drop some golden nuggets. And that's the way to get the golden apple. So it's gonna be quite some time until we actually get started in this, but I'm really looking forward to it and then also automating the more yeah, obscure mechanics, like for example there's a way to get diamonds and everything else. But there's not really a shortcut when it comes to regression, so it just uh, fills some gaps that the vanilla game doesn't provide. Alright, I hope you enjoyed this episode and I hope you see you in the next one. See you guys, bye bye!